Hey guys, welcome to the next video. Today we're going to be talking about the upper legs. And I've divided these videos into a couple of sections because the upper legs are one of those areas that are pretty packed with information. So we're going to try to simplify this in a way that's easier to digest and to sculpt. And we're going to start with the front part of the upper legs first. So let's get going. In this case, uh, the first thing, as always, we're gonna go over the bones, the most important bones in the in the upper legs, and they're actually quite simple. They're pretty similar to what we have on the uh, upper limbs, so on the arms, and they are the pelvis, which is formed by three bones: the ilium, this wing right here, the ischium, which is this like um, hoop on the bottom side, and the uh, pubis on the back side. No, wait, the pubis is this guy right here. So it's like one, two, and three. These three bones merge together when we're really young and they create the pelvis and we got two sides to the pelvis. On the back side, we're gonna have the um, lumbar vertebrae. We're gonna have the sacrum, which is this big triangular uh, piece here, and the coccyx, which is a little tip here. If you ever fallen on your butt while roller skating or um, skating in general, you probably hurt your coccyx. We also have the femur, which is the biggest bone in the human body, and we got the patella, which is the kneecap right here. Those are pretty much it. There's not a lot of uh, secrets here. The one thing that I do want to share, no, actually, we do have a couple of secrets. Don't, don't lie, Abraham. This is what we have. First of all, in regards to the pelvis, we have something called the iliac spines. And the iliac spines are specific points. We talked about this before when we talked about the dimples in the lower back, the iliac spines are pretty much the end of the reach of the iliac crest. And we have four iliac spines. The way you're gonna identify them is by their uh, acronym, and it's uh, su uh, superior, anterior, no. First is anterior, superior iliac spine. This is this one right here, the upper one and then anterior inferior iliac spine, which is the bottom one, posterior superior iliac spine, top one, top back one, and then posterior inferior iliac spine, this one right here. It's really not that important for you to memorize all of that. It's just important for you to know that those spines are gonna be important insertion points for several of the muscles that we're gonna be talking about. In regards to the femur, the femur has a very important characteristic and that's the fact that it also is a ball and socket uh, connection or articulation, but it has this 45, almost 45 degree angle change. This allows for our weight to be distributed in a more efficient way. If we had straight femurs, uh, femurs what would happen is that the pressure that our feet would get would be enormous. So the body evolved into this way so that it's easier for us to pretty much carry our own way throughout our lives. Now, this also gives us an interesting thing. Since, since, since it is pushing in this 45 degree angle, we're gonna have an extra kind of push in our skin at this side. And that, my friends, is what gives us the hips. The hips are created pretty much due to that 45 degree angle pushing our skin to the sides. Now, let's jump into the muscles of the front side of the uh, leg. Now, the main muscle that's gonna pretty much encompass about like 60% of all the leg uh, volume, is gonna be the quadricep. And the quadricep, as its name suggests, it's made out of four heads. But similar to what we had with the tricep, even though the tricep had three heads, we only saw two. Well, with the, quad uh, with the quads, even though we have four heads, four muscular heads, we're only gonna see three. And those, th those three are actually, uh, they, they got their own name, so it's important for you to know them. It's the vastus lateralis, rectus femoris, and vastus medialis. Lateralis means lateral, so it's gonna be on the side. Medialis means medium or midline, so it's gonna be in the middle. And rectus femoris is gonna be right in the, in the middle. Now, how does this work? They all start on this iliac spines that we talked about, and they all originate there, and they're gonna create like a big, big, really big teardrop shape, like so. See that shape right there? It's a very distinctive, I mean, if you ever seen like bodybuilders, you can clearly see the teardrop shape that these muscles make. Now, on the front side, they, these, all of these muscles, along with the fourth head that's beneath them, will convert or converge into a very big tendon that's gonna pretty much 
cover the patella and go all the way to the tibia like so and this big tendon happens in a very similar way or looks in a very similar way like the one from the tricep actually let me make a quick uh, tangent here the arm if you remember the arm we have the shoulder bicep tricep forearms and then of course the hand right here and the arm rotates this way right it, it falls this way well the leg is very similar we're gonna have the butt which is the glutes we have quad we're gonna have a bicep on here and then we're gonna have the calf muscles and it's gonna rotate the other way around so arms and legs are really not that different from each other the only difference is of course the size and that one does like the forward motion and the other one does the, the backward motion so in regards to the quads the best lateralis is going to be this side muscle right here it's going to have its big volume here it's going to push to the side and uh, it's going to give us pretty much the silhouette that we have on the legs on the outer side of the legs Bastos medialis is going to give us the inner side and as you can see similar to what we had on the um, on the tricep one of the heads is going to be lower than the other one this is important there's always that balance the water metaphor that we talked about Bastus media or sorry rectus femoris is going to be here on the top and this part here let me change color so it's easier to see it's where the tendon is going to begin so in a very 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 toned leg you're going to see a huge dip here and a big tendon going towards the knee and that's pretty much the quads here the next muscle it's a very funny one it's called the sartorius muscle and the sartorius gets its name from um actually i don't know the word in english from the people that used to do the clothing and the sewing and all that stuff in Spanish, we call them sastres. Um, the tailors, tailors. That's the word. I knew it. Tailors. So it gets their word or their uh, name from tailors because tailors used to sit. Imagine this is the tailor, and they would cross their leg this way. Their leg would be like here. And they would sew stuff here in their lap, right? And this movement where the leg crosses the other one when you're sitting is what um, the sartorius is responsible for, of bringing the, um, the leg close to the knee and bending it like to the side. So the sartorius muscle, what it does, it's a band that pretty much divides the compartments in the leg. It will divide, similar to what we had on the, on the forearm where we had like different compartments. Well, here we will have one division and that's the sartorius muscle. It will come from the same place, from the same iliac spine. It will go all around the border of the, um, of the quads and it will insert itself in a bundle of huge connective tissue here on the inner side of the knee. We'll talk about the knee in just a second. That's a, it's a very important part. But the important thing to know is that the sartorius will follow pretty much this, um, this silhouette right here. And it will be a very, very obvious change in planes. You'll see in the shadows, uh, the shadows and the lights in the reference make it really obvious to know where the sartorius muscle pretty much divides both compartments. Other than that, we have this inner muscles called the adductors gracilis and pectineus. These muscles originate from the middle section of the pelvis. Let me change colors. And pretty much fill all of this gap. It's not really important for you to memorize the exact direction. It's similar to the flexors and the extensors. There's a lot of muscles going on here. But what these muscles do is they bring the uh, leg back after you've done like a split or something. So these muscles will pretty much fill this area here. And in recent years, I've seen like a trend for girls where they try to uh, have like a gap in between their thighs. That's not really natural. You need to be really lean and really fit to get that uh, gap. Usually there's a healthy amount of fat in this inner section and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. So it's just, you know, like fashion trends and whatnot. Um, and yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So let's talk about the knee now. The knee has a very specific function in, or it's not, not, not a function, rather it's unique in the fact that it's like a floating bone. This bone doesn't actually connect to another bone through any sort of uh, articulation. The thing that happens is that there's a lot of tendons like holding, oh, again, let me add my uh, layer, holding the knee together, like the tendon from the quads and everything, everything is just there trying to protect the knee from flying all over the place. Now, how does the knee work? It's actually really simple. Let me zoom in real quick if Foolish wants to cooperate. There we go. So the knee, the patella, has this um, 
square-like shape and it rests right in front of the femur and below the femur we're gonna have the tibia so it's like a seat for the for the patella the tibia here the um, the other bone that we'll talk about later will rest around him okay so it's not like the elbow where both bones are uh, making contact with the humerus this one only the tibia is actually making contact with the uh, femur and the patella rests right here. Now, one of the main mistakes that people make when sculpting the knee is that if they see a bent knee, they bend or keep the patella like completely uh, straight. That's not what happens. If you bend your knee, the patella will pretty much follow the tibia. So you'll have this, okay? And the, the tendon from the quads will just stretch over it, okay? You will always have the patella on the front of your knee. It will never go to the to the top side here it would leave this area unprotected and that's not its uh, it, its purpose this basically serves as a shield for that articulation because it's a very important articulation for us and it kind of shields it from uh, hits and and any kind of injury that we might have when we fall now in regards to the sculpture of the of the knee it's actually not that not that difficult uh, a friend of mine did a tutorial a couple of uh, years ago and she mentioned that the knees kind of look like baby faces, like baby grumpy faces. There's actually been like a couple of posts I've seen in Facebook that address this. Uh, and yeah, they kind of do. And the, the reason why it does is because you usually have these two divots on the side, a big round surface here, then the patella, like so and then more divots over here and over here. So it kind of makes it look like a grumpy grumpy baby face. Uh, and that's a good way to remember the forms that you need to sculpt. Uh, you can see like, here's a, an eye, an eye, the other, uh, the mouth, or sorry, the nose, and then the, the shape of the of the overall head. So if, if that works for you, if that's the way that you like to remember it, go for it, like it, it totally works, it's not a big deal. Uh, but you need to remember that here in this area, you're gonna have three things. You're gonna have the big tendon from the quad coming down, you're gonna have the patella, and you're gonna have this triangular looking shape here that represents or follows the tibia's head. And after that, in this little line here, that's the tibia becoming uh, thinner and going all the way to the ankle, which we will talk about when we go into the, um, into the lower leg. Now, let me see if I can make this thing to work. There we go. Right, give me just one second for this to oh, come on Photoshop. I don't know what happened with the last couple of updates where this thing gets really, really weird. There we go. Okay, reference. Now let's break down some of the reference here uh, in regards to muscles. So let's start with this leg right here. As you can see, the biggest piece of muscles that you're gonna see on the on the leg it doesn't matter if it's a female leg or a male leg, and it doesn't really matter if it's really toned or not, you're gonna see the quads. All of this thing, that's the quad. And see here, this is what I told you about. There's this big looking line here, kind of dividing the compartments of the, of the leg. That's where the sartorius is. And the sartorius, rather than having the volume of the band, it's more like the indentation that it marks. Like the, It's like a rubber band, uh, pretty much making a pressure there and creating this shape in volume here in the inner side of the of the leg. So that's what we're gonna be sculpting once we hit uh, our seabrush uh, part. Now on this side, oh, come on. Let's give this a couple seconds, there we go. On this side over here, I think you can see the mouse. Just one more second, sorry about that guys. Okay, so this big muscle right here, that's the rectus femoris that's the center muscle right there this one right here is the vastus medialis which is again on the middle side of the leg and this one over here is the vastus lateralis which is on the lateral side now all of this create the big tendon that you're seeing here and it goes over it's just very thin it goes over and inserts itself all the way over here that's why the exercises that you do in the gym, it's pretty much you sitting down with your, your quad and you need to push like a bar through here because you're pretty much contracting this muscle so that the lower leg rises. Okay, now all of these muscles here, let me change colors. 
all of these muscles here are the inner ones that I was talking about. And as you can see, there's not really much definition and she's really, really toned. There's not much definition. You're just going to see like a big compartment of the adductors, which are, the, again, the muscles that bring the leg um, back to the center line. This uh, part right here is very important in regards to what we were talking about uh, the sartorius and other muscles. This bundle of connective tissue here will give us a very distinctive silhouette. And this is the thing I wanted to show you before we jump into the sculpting process. If you see this uh, leg right from the front, you're going to see that on the outside of the leg, you're going to have a very straight looking silhouette right here. It's pretty much a straight line. And on the inner side, on its counterpart, you're going to see a bulge. So it's like a round thing. And that, again, comes from the thing that we were talking about. If you have a peak, you're going to have a valley. Peak, valley, peak, valley. And there's always that balance. Leg is a, The leg is a very clear example of how that works. Because we're going to have a very big um, peak right here, like a very nice curvature all the way from the hips down to the knee. And to counter that, we're going to have a very flat surface here on the inside that then is going to change and become very curved down here on the on the lower um, lower leg. So be mindful of that. There's going to be a lot of changes of direction, a lot of changes of uh, forms and volumes along the leg. And it's very important for you to consider all of them because that's what's going to give you the best result possible. Now, if we go back here to the to the knee, just to further emphasize what we're talking about, this is the patella right there. And this right here is the head of the tibia. It pushes against the surface. That's why uh, hitting your shin when playing soccer or any kind of sport hurts a lot because the bone is really close to the skin and the bones, bones have a lot of um, nervous terminals. So it really hurts. And you're going to see everything here. We're going to talk about that later. Again, the angry baby kind of thing, dimple, dimple, all the shadows. Just look at your reference and try to uh, copy that. But the main thing is you're going to have a little bit of volume from the um, from the quads here and here. You're going to have the patella here, the tendon very straight here, triangle looking shape here, and then divot here and divot here. You see the little uh, crevices there? Those are very important when constructing a proper knee. This one, for instance, it's a more uh, not as athletic, but again, pretty toned. So you can again see this is very important. This is the uh, superior anterior superior iliac spine, which I mentioned was the insertion point for all of these muscles. And see how this muscle travels pretty much throughout the side and create this teardrop shape. That's what I want you guys to take away from, from this lecture. This teardrop shape is going to be vital for, for the pretty much the preparation of your of your character. And as you can see in this character, you you don't really see the division of the three different um, parts of the quads. You see as a, as, as a whole, because she has a little bit more um, fat in her body, and therefore the definition of the muscle is not going to be as obvious. But however, you still see these lines, see? That's the sartorius working. It, again, coming all the way to the iliac spine and giving us the inner compartment that we were talking about, this one right here. So keep that in mind. Again, deep out here, Deeper in the inside here, straight, bulged. Okay, very important. And from the side, this is a side view that I wanted to get for you guys. From the side view, you're also gonna see the vastus medialis. Look at this. Vastus medialis is huge. Sorry, the lateralis. Vastus lateralis is huge. You're pretty much gonna cover half of the side of the character with just that muscle. All of these muscles we'll see in the next video when we explore the, the back part of the, of the character. But this right here, that's the vastus medialis, going all the way to the front because we're going to insert ourselves right there. We're going we're gonna, to um, we're gonna encompass pretty much half of the side part of the leg. So hopefully with this, you guys get a nice uh, idea of what we're going for in regards to the, to the leg. In this case, we're not going to jump into the sculpting just yet. We're going to go over the lower leg first, lower leg, sorry, the upper leg, but the back and, and uh, side views. And then we're going to do all together in Seabrush. So hold on tight for just one more lecture about the back of the legs, and then we'll jump into Seabrush. I'll see you guys in the next video.